So hello everybody, this Friday series time in front of the DAX Fridays, a new DAX function every Friday. In today's DAX Fridays, we're going to talk about virtual tables, how to create them, when to create them, all that good stuff. So let's get started. Okay, so I have told you a million times that you can do the same calculation in a million different ways using DAX. And I often mention one way to do this would be create a virtual table and do the calculation on that new table. As always with DAX, there's a thousand million one ways to do things. One thing you could do, you could summarize this table and create the, basically this table either on the fly on a separate table and then do the max there, the normal max. But even though I have made virtual tables on previous DAX Fridays, I have not created a video just for that. And I want to tell, I want to create this video so I can refer to it and I can show you what I mean when I say that you can create a virtual table to do a calculation and how you actually do that. So I have an example here that exemplifies the whole thing fairly well, I would say. So let me show you the data. I have a table that contains students. There's three students, student one, two, and three. And they have done a few exams. These are the grades for the exam. And then the overall grade for all the exams, don't make the math because you won't add up. I just made up the numbers. <laughs> the overall grade for student one is 75, for student two, 65 points out of 100, and for student three, 61 points. Okay? So they have grade B, C, and C. Now, so you can see the overall grade is repeating for the student. If I go to, to the reporting table and I said, okay, I want to know the grades. So this is the overall grade for each student. What, what Power BI does by default, it sums. So it is summing everything. You can see it by the symbol here. So obviously the overall grade for student one is not 300 points, but it would, because the summing is giving you that. What you can do easily is go here and say, give me the max. And then suddenly you see the overall grades for each student without having to do any black magic in DAX. It just works. So if we go back to the table, you see student 175, 65, 61. Works beautifully. So what, what about virtual tables? Now, let's say that we want to count how many students have got a specific grade. So if you remember here on the table, I have grade B and C. So I want to know how many students have grade B. How many students have grade C? How do you do that? So we go back here again. I'm going to copy the table because they want to keep the formatting. I'm going to put the grade ABC instead. And I want to count the number of students for each grade. So we know student one has one B and student two and three has one, one C and one C. So it should be one and two, right? So I said, okay, I put overall grades in there. It sounds that doesn't work. If I say, okay, I can put max, it doesn't work either because it's giving me the max of 75 and the max of these two, which is 65. That's not what I want. If I said, okay, put count, it's counting four and eight. What is this four and eight? Well, it's basically counting the number of times that it appears. B appears four and C appears eight. So none of these things work because the value is repeating everywhere. So how do we do that? Again, there are a million ways to do things in DAX. I'm going to show you how to do this with a virtual table. So what we're going to do is create a new table that is going to give us the unique values for each student. So unique values. Now, I am just creating this table here so I can see the results. You can use Stack Studio for this. You can use other tools. I, I do it in here. I prefer to do it here. So summarize. And again, summarize is probably not the most efficient, but this is a small data and example. It works for us. So summarize, the table is going to be the grades, and then we're going to summarize by student and by grade. Where is the grade grade? So now we've created a small table that give us the student one has grade B, student two C, student three C. Now, what we need to do is to count these and then we're good to go. Do you see where I'm going? So I'm going to copy this. We're not going to use that table in there. I'm going to go in here, create a new measure.
and I'm learning, I'm learning. So we're going to do count x because if you, you count, you need a column and that's not going to work because we're going to put this a table. We need count x to be able to have a table to do the count on. So count x, it goes, okay, give me a table and then have an expression. So the table is going to be the, um, the table we just created is the summarized grades. We know now you have in your picture in your head of how that table looks like because we just created it. And then we are, we are going to do the count of the grades. So it's grabbing the table that we created and then it's counting on column grade. And then we go here, we drop our measure in there. And voila. Okay, so this table, let me delete both. So they are not needed. I just created it to be able to see the result. I'm going to delete it so you see. Okay, so now the table is built in, in here, and then it's counting by the column grades within the table that we created here, and then you're good to go, <laughs> okay? So, so that's how you do it with virtual tables. I hope that this starts to give you an idea of how you can create virtual tables in the background to create the calculations that you need, the way you need it, when you need them, okay? So this is all for today. I will see you again on Monday. Until then, as always, take care. Bye-bye.